So in this video, we're going to be building this advanced carousel. What makes it so advanced? Well, the images cascade or they overlap one another. They scale relative to the center card right here. And then the functionality of the images on the end popping up or popping out and then popping in, depending on which way you scroll. So if this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. So let's begin by normalizing the, uh, the page. I'm just do a body, we'll do a margin of zero. So margin of zero, we'll do a padding of zero. And then I'll do a height of 100 viewport height. We'll do a width of 100 viewport width. There we go. Let's create a viewport. If you don't know what a viewport is, it's uh there you, where's my pen? All right. So let's say you have an image like this, whatever the image is, all a viewport is is something like this. It's a box. Let's say the viewport was this. Everything outside the box would be hidden and all the user would see would be this guy right here. So this is not needed absolutely for this uh, for this video here, but in future videos, we're gonna manipulate the viewport in order to create different effects with this uh, this carousel. And so let's create a viewport. I'm just gonna say dot viewport, and we'll do a position of absolute. We're gonna center it. So position absolute, a top or a Y of, not left, of 50%. We'll do a left or an X of 50%. And then we'll do a transform. We'll translate it, negative 50% to center it. And then we have to give it some sort of dimension so we can see it. We'll do a height of, now let's say 400 pixels, eh, 500 pixels. We'll do a width of, let's go 1,000 pixels. Let's give it a background color. We'll do a background color of green. All right, let's put it in our code. Let's go div.view-port. There we go, we'll save, go back to our page. There we go, so that's our viewport. Let me get rid of that. That's our viewport here. Now let's create a container for the deck of cards. So I'm just gonna call that the card container. So card-container, and we're also gonna center it in the middle of the viewport. So we can just copy all of this code here. It's just gonna have different dimensions and a different color. There we go. And there we go, top 50, 50. For the deck of cards, each card's gonna have a height of, let's say, 200 pixels and a width of 300 pixels. Transforms perfect. And the color, let's just say white, so we have a space in between. Let's put it in the actual viewport. Let's put the card container in the viewport. So card-container, there we go. So that's our card container there. Can I zoom in a bit? There we go. So that's our card container here. Uh, let's make a, um, I don't know, eight. We'll do an, an even number and an odd number. So we'll do eight and nine. So let's make nine cards that go in the, the card container here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna say for each card, we'll do a position of absolute. We wanna stack all of the cards on top of one another before we actually do the, uh, do the shifting. So we wanna stack, initially stack all the cards on top of one another like uh, this. Let me get the black, there we go. So all the cards are gonna be initially stacked on top of one another and then we're gonna offset the cards. We're gonna, we're gonna order them off to the side like this. And this is just because the way the math works, we, could, we couldn't, well, I guess I could have made it work, but, but to have the cards automatically stack like this by using CSS, all the math of what we're about to do wouldn't work. So we wanna stack all the cards on top of one another initially and then fan them out. So let me control, clear this canvas. So that's why they all have to have a position absolute. So we're gonna do a position absolute. We'll do a top of zero, left of zero. That's a default. That's the default values of this. I just wanna be explicit about this. So we'll do that, position absolute. We'll give it the height and the width of the card container the deck, uh, the container for our deck of cards. And we'll give background color, no. We'll do individual colors for our our cards. I'm gonna do div.card, like that. I'll add a style equals background color. And for this guy, I don't know, dark salmon, sounds good. And let's go with control save. We go in here, there we go. Let's do, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's change up those colors. What should we do for the colors? Let's do, oh, let's do this. Mm, purple, there you go, purple. We save, we go back. And so this is the, the last guy in the children right here. So that's, uh, let's go inspect. So that's this guy right here. 
Let's give them all values so we know who they are. So the first card or index, we'll go by index for this video. That's why all the math works. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Not there. Not there either. Go back here. 6, 7. So 0 through 8 is 9 cards total. I save and the ninth card's on the top here. Let me do this. Do a font size so we can see it. Font size of 2.5 EM. There we go. So that's the ninth card. If I take the ninth card out of the child tree, we get the seventh, or the, that shouldn't be seven, or excuse me, it should be nine, it should be eight. We get the seven, I take the seven out, we get the six. So all the cards are stacked on top of one another, just like this. So we're going to go in and we're going to create a function that fans them out in order. So that function is going to be, well, let's do this. Let's, uh, we need some variables to play with. So let's capture these cards. Let's do the card, the, uh, the whole deck. So let's do card container. Let's go document dot query selector, and we'll get it by the class card container. Card container like that. We're gonna need the width of one individual card for our math. So I'll just do card width, and we can do a get computed style. We'll give it any card. It doesn't matter. They all have the same width. So card container dot children, and we'll get the first card. And we'll get the width, and this is a string. We want to do math with it, so we need to convert it into a float or an integer. I'm just going to convert it into a float. So parse float, there we go. We're also going to need the active card, so the middle card. We have to keep track of the index within our children. So it's a simple formula. We're going to say, let's get the length of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the deck. So total number of cards by index. That's just going to be equal to card container dot children dot length minus one. That's by index. To get that middle card, we'll call it the middle card. That's just going to be divided by two. So total number divided by two. Now there's a problem here. When you have five cards, let's say you have four cards. Four cards here. One, two, three, four. Which one's the active one? Well, we have to make a decision. Four divided by two is two. It's a nice, even, round number. So that'll be our active guy. That's going to be what the user's focusing on. But if we have an odd number, what's 5 divided by 2? Well, it's 2.5. There's no such index as 2.5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have to make a decision. Do you want to go right or do you want to go left? We're going to go left. So when we have, when we have a, an, an odd number of cards and we divide by 2, we're going to take the floor or we're going to round down to this card right here. So we need to do this here. So divide by two, and whatever it is, give me the, or round down. So equal, and we'll do math.floor, and there we go. So we have the all the cards. We have a width of one card. We have the total number of cards in our deck, and then we have the middle card. Let's create a function that actually fans these cards out. So I'm going to call that, let's call it order card. So function order cards. There's no argument. And we need to loop through the card. So four let i equal to zero, i is less than or equal to the total number of cards by index, and then we'll do an i plus plus, and then we need to do a bit of logic here. So the logic goes like this. Let me clear this out. We always have two halves of our, of our, uh, our little deck. Let's say we have, again, we'll just go with five cards, it's easier to draw. So we have one card here, one card here. This is the focused card right here. And then we have one card here, one card here. Currently, all these cards are sitting on top of one another. This guy's going to be index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We know the center card. We know the center index. All the cards to the left, they need a counter associated with them. All the cards to the right need a different counter. What we want to do is we're going to count up. So the loop's going up from 0 to 4. If the card's on to the left of our middle index, we need to move it a certain number of pixels to the left. So negative uh, something pixels. Now what that is, is all cards start from here. Their left value always starts from here. So this, this card right here, that's zero. Well, that's one, two times card width. This card one is one times card width. On the right side, we have a different counter. This three here is one times your card width. This four is one, two times. If we had a fifth card here, this would be one, two, three times card width. 
So we're going to create a little logic block, and we're just going to increment by card widths. Let me show you. So if i, which is the current card we're on, if that's less than the middle card, there we go. Let's go middle card by index. Just be explicit by index. There we go, middle card by index. We know we're working with the left half of the deck. Else if the i is greater than the middle card by index, there we go. We know we're working with the right half of the deck. And then we need a case for when we're working with the center card. Else, that's the center card. Now all we need to do is we need a counter. That counter is going to start at, well, how many cards do we have to the left of the middle card here? Well, it happens to be the number right here. So we can take this number here. We have two cards. So the counter for the left, counter for the left is going to be equal to that middle card by index. Middle card by blah, 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 index. How many cards do we have to the right? Well, we don't need to know that. We can just start our counter at. So the counter for the right, that can just start at one. Because we know that this guy's going to be one times, and this guy's going to be two times, this guy's going to be three times. So we need these two counters here, counter left and counter right. So let's go back to the code. Let's go here. We say let counter left equal the middle. Because that's how many cards happen to be to the left of our middle card, which is a nice coincidence. So let counter right, and we're going to start this guy at one. So all we're going to say is for the cards on the left, the current card that we're on, let me, should I do that? No, I was going to make a separate variable, but it's, it's like one line of code. So we're just going to say card container dot children. So the current card we're on, I, it's style dot left is equal to, and we want to shift it to the left. So we need a negative. So negative, and then a certain number of pixels. So minus, there we go, pixels. And that formula is the card width, any card width, times the counter to the left. So times counter to the left, and then we increment that counter to the left plus plus. Actually, we minus minus because we're moving to the right. And this guy is just the reverse logic. So if you're to the right of that middle card, we need you to move to the right more. So we don't need the minus. It's still card width. And now it's counter to the right. And we do a counter right plus plus, not counter left, negative, negative. So counter right plus plus. And then if the else case is the the center card right here, which we don't move, but we're still going to set a left because if we don't, the math won't work. So we need to explicitly say zero. So I can just do this and we'll go, you are equal to zero pixels. We save, let's run this function, order cards, save, we go back and there we go. We have our cards ordered. Let's get some, uh, some borders on these guys. It'll pop out more, a lot easier, a lot nicer. So we'll go to the card here, and we'll just say a box sizing. So we're going to do that. We're just going to do a border of two pixels solid and then black. Save. We go back to our thing. There we go. So we have our, our, our deck of cards plopped down in the middle. Now we've just uh, we've splayed them or fanned them out. All right, so coding the next and the, uh, the previous functionality, uh, should I draw it first? How about I do this? I'm going to set up some listeners and then I'm just going to take you through the explanation of what we're going to do and then we're going to do it. So let's do this here. And previously I had buttons doing this, but it was just I had to click on the buttons. Let's just do uh, key presses. So we're going to do window dot add event listener and we're going to look for a key up and the event I need. Nope. What is this? Key up event arrow function. There we go. All right, so when I press the A key, we'll do previous. So E if event dot key is equal to A, we'll do previous sliding. So we'll make a function in a second. So previous card like this. And then if I press the D key, we'll do a next slide or next card, excuse me, D there. And we'll just do next card. And let's just write the, what's going on here? I need the else if. So else if, there you go. Let's write those functions here for now. So previous, actually we're gonna do all the next card. So all the, these uh, these two uh, functionalities, these two functions, there's mirror opposites of one another. So we're gonna code up the uh, the next card, get that all working, just copy paste and kind of reverse the logic for the uh, the previous card. So next card, there we go. 
copy this. And this guy should be previous card. All right, so what are we going to do with the previous card, next card business? What does that look like? Let me clear this. All right, so what we're going to actually I don't really need to do that right now. All right, so let me refresh. All right, so you see we have all these cards here. When we click the next button, we want all the cards to shift to the left because we want the five to be in the fourth place. We want They want to focus on the, the five card here. When we click the, the previous button, we want to do the opposite. But again, we're going to code all the next logic. We're going to copy paste it, and we're just going to reverse the logic for the previous. And so there's going to be a few things happening here. When we click next, we want all the cards except one of them to shift to the left. Now, when we shift to the left, what makes it a carousel, a cascading carousel, is that this first card here, he has to go where the eight is here. And so when we click next, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, they have to shift left. And this guy is a special case that we have to code for, which you'll see when we code for. So let's start by shifting all of these guys, one through eight, to the left. So let's go here. Next card. We're just going to do a loop. So we're going to start at 8. So we're going to start at the end of the line. So 4 let i is equal to, and that would be the total, the total number of cards. There we go. i is less or greater than 0. If we did greater than or equal to, that would include our special case. We don't want this guy. So greater than 0. And then we do i minus minus because we're descending. There we go. And now we have to do this. All we have to do, because we set ourselves up perfectly right here, where we gave every card a left style, all we have to do when we shift left is, hey, card five, your left should now be four's left. Hey, card four, your left should be three's left. So we just switch out their left values, and they switch out their places visually as well. So let's do this. So all we're going to say is, I'm going to get the current card, because we're going to use this this uh, this uh, variable uh, a few times. So I'll do const card is equal to, what is it, card container dot children. This is just the current card we're looping on. And that would be the i. And there we go. All we're going to say is that card dot style dot left, you're equal to the previous guy's left. So we'll do card container dot children. And this would be i minus one dot style dot left. We save, and I'm coding for the, the key D, right? So I press my next key, and we get this. We get that. Now, it's happening a bit too quickly. Let's do a transition speed. Card.style.transition duration, and we'll set it to one second. Save, go back, I hit the next button, and we get that. And as you can see, it's going back, 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 and that zero card is still there. But all these cards are piling on top of one another, because there's nowhere else to go. So I can't go further left than that because there's no cards to take left from. So we have that functionality coded. When we hit that left, or excuse me, the next button, we want a separate animation to play with this guy. What we want, and you can do different things depending on your aesthetics. I'm just gonna shrink this card to scale zero and I'm gonna pop him back up here. You can do like maybe a fade in, or excuse me, fade out and then fade in. Just for this video, I'm just going to shrink it scale to zero, and its scale is going to go back to here. But just like all these cards, they took on the properties of their previous guy's card. This guy right here has to take on the properties of this guy right here. So let's do that. So we're going to have to save this guy's properties. Because right now, if I click the, the next button, well, what is this guy's left? This guy's left is now this. So if that first card moves to the previous guy's left, that first card's going to overlap here. We need to, before we even shift, I need to save this guy's properties so this guy right here can take them. So I'm going to go into the code. I'm going to say, and that's the last card. So I'm going to say const last cards left is equal to, and we'll say card container dot children, and then we'll take the last index. So total number of cards style dot left. So we saved his left, and then we shift everyone. And then this is the special case that I'll do this for now. Special case, special case. And so that's going to be the first card. So we can just do card container and we can do dot children. And that's the zero. There we go. And his left is now going to be equal to the last cards left like this. There we go. Save, we go back. I hit my next button. And as you can see, the card's there. Now, what's going on? 
Well, I put this guy in the loop. That guy shouldn't be in the loop. There we go. Now he's outside the loop. So loop through the uh, the cards, shift everyone to the left, and then handle this special case by itself. So save, I go back, I hit my next button. There we go. So the zero guy is here. Now, something to note that we have to take care of. Visually, in terms of style, it's there. When I go back here to our little inspect, pay attention. Can I shrink this just a bit? There we go. I refresh. Pay attention to this guy right here. Can I... There we go. Pay attention to the first card. That first card has a an inner text, or it's the zero card. Watch what happens when I shift. So next. Now, where did that zero card go visually? Well, it's at the end of the HTML tree. It's the last child in this parent. But in the back end, it hasn't shifted. It's still at the front of the pack. We need the, the front end to match up with the back end. We need the substance to match up with the style, the fashion, with the function. So we need to, once we shift this left visually, over here, we also need to shift it in the back end. So how we do that is we're gonna append to our tree the first object. So it looks like this. So you could say this is like a visual shift, and then this guy's gonna be the actual shift. We're gonna say card container, let me just copy and paste this. Style.left, no. What we need is card container, and we need to append. So append, and we're just gonna append the first card card container dot children zero there we go and you could say this is the actual shift on the back end so i save i go back i'm going to press next pay attention to where this guy goes this guy right here card style background dark salmon with the inner text of zero i press d and where is he he's not the front of the pack he's now at the end of the pack down here so i keep pressing d and we have this functionality here now, just like these guys are sliding to the left, so we get to see them, this guy doesn't have an animation yet. That's why he's instantly going there, instantly going, instantly going there. Let's bake in an animation, specifically that scaling animation. So what we're going to say is that scaling animation, um, I don't know how long, let's say 0 0.2 seconds or 0 0.3. Let's do 0 0.2. Do 0 0.2. And just like we copied the last objects right here, his properties of left, we need to... Uh, calculate or capture his properties of scale as well and so that scale is in the transform property so we can say last cards transform so that's all we're doing with this next card logic so we're copying the the properties of the previous card and giving them to the next card so last cards transform is equal to we can copy this and we're not taking this style left we're taking the style transform so before we even do the actual shift or even the visual shift, let me turn that off. We'll do a, an animation for scale. So we can do card and this won't be card. This will be, this shouldn't be card. This should be card container because we're always working on that first card. So dot children is zero. Copy paste. There we go. So we're working with the transform. So transform and we're going to do a scaling so we'll do a scale of zero scale of zero there we go we save i press the next button and pay attention to this first card it pops uh, down like that now what's going on well this is uh so this video is going to be littered with uh it's going to be a bit confusing but this is what animation is it's all about timing so what's going on here is it's scaling down to zero but because the code is going so quickly before we even scale down to zero, you see it visually, in terms of the actual substance, that card shifts over here. So it's like you're telling the computer to scale down something using 200 milliseconds or 0 0.2 seconds. Before it can even finish that, like half a millisecond later, you're shifting the card to the end. So you can never see the animation. So when I, if I don't shift the actual card to the end in the back end, I click the, uh, the next button, and you can actually see it. So a lot of animation is about timing things. And so what we want to do is before we do any sort of actual shift, we want to let it play out. So we have to set up artificial timers in our code. So we'll do this and we're going to wait. So this animation, the scale animation takes 0 0.2 seconds. I'm going to wait 700 milliseconds. Now I know that because I did this, I did all the, uh, the background work before I started doing this video. Just understand that I didn't take that number like, that was my first number. You had to play around with numbers. Again, it's animation. It's all about timing. When one animation finishes, how long do you want to wait before you trigger another one? I just came about this 700, and it works for this 
the video through trial and error. So we're going to wait 700 milliseconds, and then we're going to shift it over in the back end in terms of the actual shift. So I save. I click the next button. We see the actual animation, and now it's over here on the right side. So instead of doing a zero scale, let me show you this. We're going to scale to two. So I click my next button, scale to two, wait 700 milliseconds, and now in terms of the, the back end code, where is it? Do it inspect. In terms of the back end code, it's now on the, the end of the tree. We add in the left right here, like there. And now we get the visual and actual shift after we see the animation play. So I click next, we get scale up, wait, wait 700 milliseconds, which is less than a second, and then it pops over there. So let's turn that back down to zero. So zero, click next. We see the animation, and now it's on the right side here. We just can't see it. We need to scale it back up now. So again, animation is all about timing. So after we've scaled it, we've uh, scaled it down. We've shifted it left visually. We've shifted it left, excuse me, shift to the right, but we've changed this left value. We've done all our shifts. Then we want to actually expand it. So we want to reverse this transform here. So what we're going to do is, and we're going to do a different timer. So we do a set timeout, because again, if we just do it, the code right here, we're going to have the same issue where it runs in a fraction of a second and you don't get to see any of the animations. So we're going to do a set timeout. And on this guy, we're going to wait 10 milliseconds. And again, I just got that number because I did trial and error. So we'll do 10 like that. And then we're going to do a this right here. Copy these two lines. Go down here. And for this guy, we want to uh, fade in or expand back in. A little slower or faster we don't know let's just say 0 0.3 for this one and that scale is going to be the last cards transform so last cards transform there we go we save I go back I click my next button we we shrink the card zoom to the other end and now we should be expanding the card and that cards not expanding why after we shift it in the code right here that card that we're keeping track of this guy right Right, card container, there we go. This card right here, right now he's index zero. When we put him at the end of the line, his index is no longer zero. So we're losing track of him here. He's not zero. He's at the end, so that would be the total number of cards. And this guy was also would also be the total number of cards. And then we'll just do the last cards transform. We save, I go back, I hit the next button, we shrink, we go to the right, and then we shrink back up. Uh, we scale back up. And so that's the basic gist of how this carousel works. Now, before we copy and paste this code to the uh, to the previous card and kind of reverse the logic, watch this. Watch what happens when I spam the, uh, the next button. Now, what's going on? Well, I have the ability to trigger animations before that, again, all the timing, before timings are done. So we need to uh, prevent the user from doing this. And now we're gonna do that, we're just gonna have a, a flag. So we're just gonna say let animation in progress in progress there we go we're gonna equal to false when you click the next button what we're gonna say is if there's no animation in progress then we'll do all of this code so give me all of this put it all in here so if there's no animation in progress flag it as animation in progress so set it to true do all the animation and then once we're done all the animation, we'll set it back to false. So animation in progress equals false, like that. And I'll save. And we go back, and I'm spamming the next button, and we're not allowed to spam it. We get this uh, a nice easy flow. So let's uh, copy this logic, put it down into the previous button, and we'll just reverse the, uh, reverse the logic. So let's do, take all of this, yank that. Put it all here. Let's go line by line and reverse the uh, the logic. Animation in progress, true. We can keep that. Let me put in spacing here. All right. So it's not going to be the last card we need to keep track of. We need to keep track of the first card's properties in order to transfer transfer them to the last card. So we tra change this guy to first cards left. We change this guy to first cards transform. And this is not total number of the last card. This can just be zero. This can also be zero. Let I, now we're going to start from the, the left side. So we're going to start from the left. And of course, we're going to do less than 
the total number of cards. Now that's by index. So right now this doesn't include this last card here, which is what we want. And then we do an I++. All right, cost card, that's okay. Transition, and instead of taking the previous card's properties, we need the next card's properties. So this guy should be A+. Plus. And so we've just shifted all the cards to the right. And then our special case, which is we're dealing the special case now is the last card. So this zero should be the total number of cards, which is just the last card, a way of accessing the last index. So total number, we get the 0 0.2, we got the scale. And we're gonna put these guys into probably uh, separate variables maybe. Go to set timeout and the visual shift. So the visual shift, the the last card has to uh, has to pop back in. So this guy should be total number of cards. And then we need a different uh, a different way of taking the first card, or excuse me, the last card, and popping it back up on the back end. The actual shift. We can do that with a card container, and we'll do an insert before like this. And the new child would what we're taking, what we're inserting, would be the last card. So card container dot children, and that would be total number. And then we want to put it in front of the current first card, which is just the card container dot children zero dot children and zero. So this guy is now the actual shift. There we go. We can delete that line, and then we wait for it to pop back in, and we have another timer that says. Actually, this is the shift. We wait, and then this is the uh, the pop back in. And since we moved the card here, we moved it to the front of the pack now, we change this to zero, the front of the pack. Animation in progress is equal to false, and that should be good. Let's go back, clicking next, and that works. We know that works. Clicking previous now. There we go. And it's not popping back in. Why? That's because this line here, right here, last card's left. First card's left. Last card's transform. First card's transform. There we go. Save, go back, hit next. We get this. I hit previous, we get this. There we go. So how do we offset these cards? What am I talking about when I say offset? Let me just draw it first. So we have all the cards lined up here. Let's do five cards just because it's simple. So we have the center card here. Then we have two cards here, two cards here. So all the cards here, they each have 300 pixels of width. All the offset says is you have your center card here, and then this card right here should be some sort of uh, should be shifted inwards, so you get this cascading effect. We're going to do a shift of, let's say, a third of a card. So if this guy's 300 pixels that we can see, we're going to shift everything over by a third of a card. So 100 pixels of this guy is going to be hidden, 200 will be shown. 100 of this guy is going to be hidden and then 200 will be shown. So that's all offsetting is. So we can, we're gonna create the little cascading effect. So let's go into the code, and we're gonna do something to the left side of the deck and the right side, so we can copy the logic of our uh, of our order cards here. So we just copy this, and we'll call this function, what should we call it? Offset cards, that's nice and simple. Space there, all right, so just offset cards, offset cards, there we go. And so we'll just delete the inner logic here. We'll still need to increment the counters and we're not gonna offset the middle card at all so we can delete this part here. There we go. All right, so if it's a card on the left side of the middle card, you wanna shift the card over to the right a certain amount. Let's put that amount in a variable. So let's get that variable, let's say offset card. Let's say card offset, card offset. It's equal to, and it's a third of the card. So card width times one third. There we go. So if you're to the left of the center card, we want you to move over to the right side a bit by a third of a card. So we're just gonna say card container dot children. So the current card we're working on and your style dot left is gonna be equal to, and it's going to be equal to some sort of pixel value. So we're gonna shift pixels, we're gonna do There we go. A, what was that? The card offset. Times, and it's times the counter left. Now, what's this times counter left business? Well, just like we ordered the cards when we said that this guy right here, this guy right here, well, he's one, two times a card width. This guy is one times a card width. We can just use that exact same logic here. So this guy is two times 
a card offset and the next guy will be one times a card offset and then zero times a card offset and so on and so forth. So we can copy this and we'll just reverse the logic here. So instead of moving, if you're on the right, if you're on the left side of the deck in the middle, we need you to move to the right. If you're on the right side, we need you to shift over to the left. So we'll do the negative here. So negative and then card offset counter left, no counter right. And the right plus plus, we save. Let's run the function. We'll do, it's not order cards, it's offset cards. There we go, save. And we're getting this weird stuff. What's going on? Well, we're setting a left uh, value, but we called this function first, which also set a left value. So when we set the left value again, we're forgetting we set it here. So we need to bake in the previous left plus or minus the offset. So let's capture the previous left of the card right here. Let's give some spacing. Let's say, now it doesn't really matter. Let's say current cards, previous cards, current cards, current left. It's equal to card container. Container, we'll do a children and we'll get the I and we just need the left, style.left. This is a string, we wanna do some math with it so we need to convert it to a, uh, parse it into a float, parse float. There we go. And then when we go to, if we have the cards on the left side of the middle, we want the previous card or the current cards left, excuse me, the current left, and we need you to add the offset. There we go. And we need the reverse for the other side. So we don't need this negative here. What we're gonna say is if you're on the right side of that middle card, take the current left and we need to subtract the offset. Now when I save and go back, we get this effect. Now visually it kind of looks uh, a bit weird. We haven't adjusted the uh, the Z axis, so cards aren't overlapping each other like they should. So this four card is still in the center. It's just that these cards, their Z indices are not uh, they're not adjusted. We'll do that in a few moments. So to cascade these cards, we just need to play around with their Z axes. If you don't know what Z axis or Z index is, well, in 2D you have your X and your Y. So let's say you have your X here and you have your Y here. When you enter the third dimension, you get a, a Z axis. So in CSS, HTML, it looks like this. Let's say we're looking at some elements. It doesn't matter what they are from the side. Let's say this had a Z index of zero and then one, two. Well, visually from the top, what we'd see is the two overlaps the one, which overlaps the zero. If we switch this guy to, let's say 100, then visually from the top, this guy, we'd see this guy first and then the two and then the zero. So it's just a way of indicating depth or the third dimension in your CSS. What we're going to do is we're just going to tie the Z index to the indice of the uh, of the card. So let's say we have five cards. It's nice and simple. That's five. This is the middle guy here. We have zero, one, two, three, four. Any card that's to the left and including our middle or active card, its Z index should just be the index or the yeah, the current index of the card because the zero here gets overlapped by the one which gets overlapped by the two. But that trend needs to reverse on the, the right side because this three gets overlapped by the four, which is why we have this business right here where we see the five getting overlapped by the six. We just need to multiply these indices by negative one. So we get negative three here, negative four here. And of course, negative three is larger than negative four. So the negative three would overlap the four and so on and so forth. So let's go into the code and do that. We need to do something to the left and to the right so we can just copy our code here. So copy this offset, and we'll name this function cascade. Yeah, we'll name it cascade cards. So let me do a space, proper spacing here. And we won't need any sort of counter. We're just going to go from 0 to the end of the line. We don't need the current left. No, we don't need that. And we can delete this code here and this code here. And so if you're less than or you're equal to the middle card, your Z index should just be your index. So Z index is equal to the I. If you're to the right of the middle card, we need to reverse your index. So Z index should be equal to negative 1.0 times I. Let me call this, actually, did I rename it? I didn't rename it. Let's do cascade cards. There we go. Let me call this function down here. So we order the cards, we offset the cards, and now we're cascading or Z indexing the, uh, the cards. Cascade the cards, I save, I go back. And there we go. We have cards perfectly offset and perfectly cascaded. To get all these cards cascading, we're going to do exactly, or not scaling, not cascading, we're going to do what we've been doing, which is do something to the left half of the deck and then something to the right half of the deck. So what we're doing is 
we have the offset baked in. So we have our center card here, and then each card is offset like this, like that. Then we also adjusted their z-axis, so they're overlapping. What we now need to do is adjust their scale. So as they fan out, they get smaller like this. Let's go to the code and do that. And again, we're doing something to the left half, we're doing something to the right half, so we can copy and paste this function here. What we rename this function to, I don't know, what should we name it? Scale cards, perfect. All right, so we'll rename it to scale cards. Scale cards. We need the counters, yes we do. We don't need the current cards left, we can delete that. And we're not shifting the middle guy here. And we'll shift the middle guy here. Let's code for it right here. All right, so if you're to the left of the, how do we do this? Well, just like we offset using the counter. So we said that this guy right here, let me get red, there we go. This guy right here was one times to the left of here. And this guy was two times right here. And this guy was three times right here. What we're going to say is this guy is 0 0.95, which we're going to, let me just put it here. We're gonna, instead of hard coding it, we'll put it in a uh, variable. We'll say const and we'll say card scale, 0 0.95. So what we're going to say is this guy right here is 0.95% of our main guy. This guy right here is 0.95% of this guy. And this guy right here is 0.95% of this guy. Now, how do we do that mathematically? Well, it's 0 0.95 times 1 here, 0 0.95 times 2 here, and 0 0.95 times 3. But it's a bit different. It's not times 2 times 3. We get 0 0.95 for the first card. The second card is 0 0.95 of this. So it's 0 0.95 times 0 0.95 times 0 0.95 times 0 0.95. And so we do that in mathematics with the base 0 0.95, and the counter would be here. 2, 3, four, five. And so in the code, it looks like this. Let's go down to our function, scale cards. All right, we're changing the left, we're changing the transform. Transform, and we're changing the scale. So scale, there we go. All right, so we do math.pow. Our base is that card scale, the 0 0.95 card scale. And this is where we put the, the, uh, the counter. So we can copy this, we can paste this down here. And we use the counter right for this guy. Counter right. And this is transform, scale, scale, and the default scale for the middle guy, which is we're not really touching the scale, but we'll just code it anyways. So that scale is just going to be 1, which is 100% of what it already is. So it won't look any different. All right, we have to call the function in order for me to see it. Cascade cards, and then we'll scale the cards. So we order the cards, we offset the cards. We cascade the cards, and then we're scaling the cards down. And there we go. So we have our cards ordered. We have them offset, cascaded, and they're scaled. Let's test out the functionality. So hit next, next, next. So what's going on? Why does it look all wonky like this? Well, just like we took on the, when we did the loops for the next and the previous functionality, we took on the properties of the previous, depending on which way you went, the previous or the next card. We need to code for taking on the property of the Z index and the scale. So let's go back into the code and we'll do the next card first and then we'll just copy and paste for the previous card. So just like we save the last cards left and transform, we need to save the last card's Z index as well. So Z index and that should be style Z index. There we go. And then we go in for the non-special cases right here. We're taking the left. We need to take the scale as well as the Z index. So scale is in the transform, and we're going to take the transform, there we go, and we're taking the Z index here, style dot Z index, and Z index, there we go, and then we code for the special case right here. So transform your scale, and transform your, uh, we can do it right here, your left, and your Z index. So Z index, and then this doesn't need to be visual shift. Z index, last card, Z index. All right, let's test out the functionality of the next button. So next, next, there we go. So let me zoom in, can I do that? All right, so let's test out the functionality again. These guys should uh, should grow. Any card on the right to the middle of the, of the decks should grow. Anything on the left should shrink. So three should be two, and of course this uh, five should be four. So next. Next, perfect. 
and we go previous, and it's not doing that because we have to code for it. So let's just do that in the previous here. So first card, Z index, right here. Z index, we'll take the Z index from you. Z index, and then we go into our loop for the non special cases, and we'll take the, what I say first, transform, and we'll take your transform, which is your scale. There we go. And then we'll take your Z index. There we go. And then we need to code for the special case down here. So visual shift, copy, paste, and we're taking your first cards. Z index, and this guy should be Z index as well. All right, so let's go back, and I'm going next. Perfect. I'm gonna go previous, which means all these cards should uh, scale upwards. All these cards should, should scale downwards. I go previous. There we go. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've filled in those images. I didn't get rid of the divs. Where's the back end here? I didn't get rid of the divs because they're tied to the card. That's the functionality of the whole thing. I just replaced the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 with the images here from just a uh, Pixum site. And so what did I change in the code? I turned overflow to hidden. This, if I turn it off, you'll see why. If we go back to this, we can scroll like that, which is not what we want. So I turned the overflow to hidden and it prevents us from scrolling left and right like that. And then I just took off the colorings for the viewport, the card containers, the cards here, I turned off these things that I didn't need, the borders, and then the image was just centered within the card. And of course, it works like this. So this is just the cascading image carousel. Things scale properly, their Z indexes or indices change properly, their positions. If I go zoom out, you can see the end behavior. It still pops out, pops back in. This one will pop out, pops back in. So if this video helped you at all, don't forget to give a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you guys in the next video.